Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to the four keys to screenwriting success. I am so excited to share this masterclass with you over the next hour and a half. We'll probably be about an hour and a half going into what it really takes to succeed as a screenwriter. Now, whether you have not written a screenplay at all, ever, like you don't know anything about screenwriting, if you're in a situation where you have written one screenplay or perhaps you're in the middle of writing one, but you're feeling a little stuck, or maybe you've written one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but you still haven't had the success that you desire, you're in the right place, I am going to be giving you keys to success. And honestly, I am so excited about this particular session because today, I was just sitting working on what I'm gonna share and I already had the outline of it, but I really just, you know, I was like, okay, what are, like, what are the details? And what came through me today where I was really thinking, like, what does it really take? What are the things you've really got to avoid? How does this work? I'm like, this is gold. What you are going to get today is pure gold. And if you pay attention and you really listen and you open up and you receive what I offer you today, I am telling you, you're getting the key to screenwriting success, no matter where you are on this journey, whether you're just starting out, whether you're already, you know, got 10 screenplays in the bag and are looking for how to how to go pro, how to take the next step. So I'm like, as you can probably tell, I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't know if to get this excited about masterclass. I don't know why I'm this excited, but I really am. Cause I just feel like this is gold. If somebody could have given this to me when I was starting out, this would be like, oh my God, thank you. So I hope you are going to love it. All right, I'm gonna have a little look at who's here. Welcome. If you are an old friend, if you've been to lots of my master classes, please say hello because we're old friends. So it'd be weird not to say hello. And if you are brand new, if this is the first time you've ever done one with me, please say hello so I can welcome you. I'm so happy you're here and you found us. Welcome. Annika, hello. Kate, hello. Eglantine, hello, gorgeous. Patricia, hola. Hola, guapa. <laughs> ¿Qué tal? Tanya, greetings from Finland. Oh my gosh, hello. Les in Dublin. Hello, Abby, I'm so happy you're here. Elena, oh, this is so great. I love seeing all the, all, all the friends. Shona is here, Natasha, hello. Elam, hello, hello. Oh, Patricia, thank you. This is gonna be a fun one, I promise you. There's gonna be gold. No ma Even if you've been to other classes of mine, there's gonna be some gold in this. I just, I feel it. Chuck, I'm back. Welcome back, Chuck. I'm ready to give you an injection, a fusion of some fuel. Raksha, hello. Valerie, hola guapa, hello. Aza, hello. I don't think I know you, Aza. Welcome. Do I know you? Welcome. And I don't know if I'm saying your name correctly. I hate that one. I'm not sure. So I think it would be Aza. Welcome. Your energy off the, off the charts already. I know. Eglantine. Oh, I've been at the sea today and I'm just, I feel amazing. And I'm just, I would say just this class just feels... So on point. I'm excited. Renata, hello, Stephanie. Mandy from France. Oh, Marg, I'm so happy you're here. Welcome, Yvette. Hello, and Yvette, we have, we have got things to do together. We have some Voxer time stored up, which I cannot wait to hear things and chat with you. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Ah, Aza, new, welcome. Welcome to the party, Nina. Hello. All right, let's get started. The first thing I want to say, and as I say, I believe that this class is going to be helpful no matter where you are on this journey, whether you are have never written a screenplay and just want to write one but don't know how to go about that, or whether you've already written 10 but you're just like not at the level that you would like to be at with your career. Whichever you are, there's going to be there's going to be fuel for you. And that's how I think of these sessions. I think of it as like fuel. You're going to get a dose. So, Leslie, good morning. Oh, thank you for your message earlier, by the way. Andre, hello from Sussex. Andre, do I know you? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So, the first thing that I want to do before we even get into it is I want to ask you, what does screenwriting success actually mean to you? What would it mean for you to have success with screenwriting? And if you want to type it into the chat, I would love to read what you think it means to you. But what I think will be true is that it means something slightly different for all of us and it will probably evolve and change as you go on the journey of writing screenplays. 
I know that when I very first started out and wanted to write a screenplay, screenwriting success meant to me just finishing the screenplay. I don't know if anyone here would relate to that, but it would be like, oh my God, if I could just finish it, I'd be so proud of myself. And shocking news, it took me three years to finish it. Finishing it will mean a ton. Okay, yeah, there we go. Finishing the first draft for starters. Great. So there's a few people who are like, like success to me at this point would just mean finishing the thing. And it really is like that is the first level of success at screenwriting. And I know for me, as I said, it eluded me for a long time. Just starting actually eluded me for a long time. So when I first had an idea to write a screenplay, it actually took a few years before I even had the courage to start. So there was a moment where actually even just starting a screenplay would have been success to me. But finishing it felt really like a big deal. And it might not be finishing. It might be actually like to you, if you think about what screenwriting success means, it might mean actually selling it. It might mean actually getting made into film. It might mean getting money for it. It might mean making it yourself. It might mean winning an award for it. It might mean sitting in the, sitting in the audience watching it, sitting in a movie theater with other people watching your movie. But I want you to think about right now, for you, what it means. Finishing, selling one or more professional writer. Success means getting one of my scripts from the computer to the screen. Yep. Having my screenplay made into a good film. So we're raising the bar there, right? It's not just, it's not just getting it made. It's also getting it made in something good. Finishing is a great start, but once finished, I would like to see my work be made. Not as severely edited and thus curtailed of my, or modified version, but my version. Yep. Starting, yes, I can relate. <laughs> For me, it would be to get over the fear and intimidation and just getting it started. Yeah. And this is, it's a huge thing, actually, just to, just to get started, to hold yourself accountable, to finish it. Getting it on the screen would be amazing. Having my work resonate with lots of people would be awesome. Here we go. Being able to convey what I want to express. Yes, Patricia. So that goes into the quality of your work. Not just finishing it, but actually conveying what it is that you desire to convey. I'm thinking, I'm just going to switch off the air conditioning in here. For those of you who do not know, I have just moved to Spain and we're living, we're in this little Airbnb right now. We move into our house on Wednesday. Oh, but I'm in this little Airbnb at the moment in, in, the, in Sitges, in downtown Sitges. Okay, Leila, hello, I'm so happy you're here. Loving the script. So success to me would mean loving the script, feeling the story is mighty true and getting it onto the screen. So it's really interesting. And the reason that I bring this up right at the beginning is I want you to think about what success looks like to you because it looks like something different for all of us. And what's really important is that we hone in on what that is because that will become our big propelling why. And something that I know to be true is that in order to have any success at all, we have to have an idea of where it is that we're trying to get to. If we don't even know where we're going, if we're just like, yeah, I just want to write it and get it out there or something, I don't know. But I want you right now to really just for a second visualize the outcome that you desire. Just think about like what screenwriting success means to you and what that would actually look like and what it would feel like. What would it feel like for you to experience what you desire, what you think success is. And as I say, it might evolve over your career. I suspect it will. It usually does. Initially, we just want to finish the script. But one day you'll be like, success would mean selling it. And then one day success means actually getting it on the screen. And one day success, so it might change. And there might already be all those things. But take a moment and just really visualize what it is that you see as success. Because the journey to that point is not always going to be easy. I think you know that. The truth about screenplays, and I suspect most of you know this, is there's a lot of people who want to write them, and compared to how many people talk about writing them, only a select few actually write them and finish them. And then of the people who write them and finish them, only a select few will actually either sell them or make them, or get them made. Only a small number. And it goes like smaller and smaller and smaller. So for you to actually create the ultimate success as a screenwriter, whatever that would be to you, because some of us might be like, my ultimate success is winning the Oscar for best screenplay. For some of us, it might be the ultimate success would be getting a film made that would go into a certain festival, or whatever it is like, that excites you. But let's be clear. It's not going to be necessarily an easy journey. 
And so one thing that can guarantee though and help guarantee your success right from the outset is really tuning yourself into that big picture of why you want it to happen, what it would mean to you, how it would feel. Because honestly, that is what will fuel you through the hard times if you can keep aligning yourself with your vision. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story because there, we have some people here tonight who are new to me, who don't know me. So you might be like, who's she and why would she be talking about screenplays and why should I even listen to this person? So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my story. And if you've heard it before, you've heard it before, <laughs> you're going to hear a little bit again. And if you haven't heard it before, then I think it might give you some inspiration. It might surprise you with some of the things. So I was probably in my late 20s when I first decided that I wanted to write a screenplay. And I had spent, at that point, years of my life obsessed with the movies. <laughs> I basically lived in the art house cinema from the age of 19, 18, 19, until, until I was like 35. I lived in the art house cinema. I went to see movie after movie. I, like, I would go see three or four movies a day, which is insane to me now. <laughs> but I would literally do that. I'd come out of the movies and pay to go into another one, and then I would pay to go into another one. I just lived for them. And it wasn't though until I was in my late 20s that I really started to think like, I would like to do that. Like, I would like to write a film. It seems so crazy to me. It seems so out of reach. I was living in Scotland. I'm from Scotland originally. I grew up overseas though, so I don't have a totally typical accent. It will dip in and out. But I was living in Scotland and it just seemed like so far-fetched that I could write a film and sell it or that it would get made. I mean, that just seemed crazy. But one day I woke up and I had this idea for a movie. I didn't actually wake up with it. That's not true. I was, reading an, I was reading a newspaper and I read an article about the voiceover actors for movies in Italy being on strike. So in Italy, like in a lot of countries, they dub movies, English speaking movies into Italian. They don't put subtitles. They dub them. And I actually grew up partly in Germany and I remember, you know, watching movies <laughs> dubbed into German and I would always laugh. Like the, the night that I watched Marilyn Monroe speaking German just like is a night I'll never forget, right? <laughs> it just seems so incongruous, like Marilyn Monroe speaking in German. So, so I was aware of like, you know, the, the dubbing industry. But what was interesting when I read this article was it talked about these voiceover actors were about to go on strike and it was really a big deal for the American film industry because there's a person who is identified as the voice of certain actors. So Richard Gere, there's somebody who's Richard Gere's voice and does every single movie of Richard Gere and they can't just replace it with somebody else. So if all these act these voiceover actors went on strike, it was really going to be bad for the American film industry and their release schedule in Italy that year. I read this and immediately like a little thought like plugged into my brain. I was like, oh, isn't that interesting? Like, imagine that life of being a voiceover actor. Imagine being the voice of somebody. Imagine being the voice of Robert De Niro. Like, you got the best career ever, right? Like, you're just this voiceover actor who got assigned this job. And by luck, the actor that you're the voice for becomes this mega star and just does the most interesting work, the most amazing work. And you get to do it too. I don't know about you. This just kind of blew me away. So I immediately started thinking about, oh, this is so interesting. It wouldn't be interesting to have a movie about this. And not long after that, I was up one night in, in, on TV. I think I came home. I was, I was a waitress at the time. I think I was still waitressing. Yeah, I was still waitressing when I had this idea for the movie. So I was a waitress and I, I came home from work and I put on the late night TV and they had an interview. It was one of these shows like, oh, what happened to them? You know, these famous people, but what happened to them? One of these schlocky shows that you would watch at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right? And I was watching this and they had on it Mickey Rourke. And it really hit a nerve because I was like, God, yeah, what did happen to him? And this was the point in time and this will sort of like date when this happened, when he had quit acting to be a boxer. And, and it was all about him being a boxer. And I was like, oh my God, like imagine if you had been the voiceover actor dubbing Mickey Rourke's movies. Right? And it seemed like for a moment you were like, you were going to be the next Robert De Niro. Like you were doing the most incredible films. You were sexy. You were hot. You were amazing. You were doing fantastic roles. And then you freaking blew it. And if you were the voiceover actor of this person, like your career is dead in the water. So I immediately started thinking, wouldn't it be interesting if the movie was about somebody who was the voiceover 
actor who had dubbed Mickey Rourke's movies into into a different language. And I, I latched onto the idea that it was Spanish and it would be set in Mexico, like a Mexican voiceover actor who would then go to America to find Mickey Rourke and get him back into acting. Like, quit this boxing bullshit and get yourself back on the screen where you belong so that I can get work again. So that was the seed for the movie that I wanted to write. And I'm telling you this because it will, it will all come together, okay? It will all come together. But I just went, okay, uh, Aza, also a film buff, yeah. <laughs> I only stay screenwriting MA in London. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm sorry that happened. I'm just reading about your movie getting so close to being made. And it is, it is, a, it is hard. And actually, because that Mickey Rourke movie, what happened with it was, so I, I had the idea to write it. And I had this idea. I, like, I just knew it would make a great movie. I could see it in my head. It was like a buddy movie. It was like this little Mexican guy who was so sweet and innocent and kind of naive in a way and magical. Like just a magical little human. And Mickey Rourke. Like jaded, boxing, bitter, crazy, all the things. And I was just like, oh, like the idea of this guy like coming from Mexico. And, and to me, this movie, like in my head, and I, I had not written a word of it. It was just like, I could see it. I could feel it. It was like, I just loved it. I loved it so much. But I was like, but how do I write it? <laughs> Never written a script before. So it took me a few years to actually even get the courage to start. And what I will say about that is I had so much, like, so many blocks, like, that I would never do anything worthwhile, that even if I did write something good, it would never go anywhere. All the things, like, all these kinds of uh, blocks. And, and I just, like, I would sort of go and look at these screenwriting books in the bookshop. Anyone done this? Like, screenplay by Sid Field. And then I think, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. And then I would think, yeah, I'm going to do it. And I bought it. I bought Screenwriting by Sid Field. And it sat on my shelf for a while. I mean, I read it, but I just thought, I, I just don't know. It just seems overwhelming. Eventually, I started to write it. And that was the point at which I was like, if I can just finish this thing. But it was so hard. It was so hard. What I would do is I would write 10 pages. I would get like, right, I'm going to write this. And I would sit down and I would write my 10 pages. And then I'd be like, I have no idea what's happening next. And I don't know if this is any good. And it's probably rubbish. And then I would put it down and put it away and be like, oh, it's awful. And I would read it back. And I'd be like, this is terrible. This is not at all like the movie. That, like the movie in my head is so freaking good. And this is like, this is embarrassing. This is bad. So that went on and on and on. Where I would write 10 pages, read it back. Oh, this is rubbish. But I don't know. Have you guys had this experience where this story won't leave you alone? Has anyone had this? And it's like, you just kind of want it to go away and leave you alone. You're like, ah. But then also you're just like, oh, but I love this movie. And it was like, for me, it was these characters. It was Jose and Mickey. It was like Mickey. And it was called Mickey and Me. And I would just like, I would keep coming back to it. And it's just, there was something about it. Natasha, I relate so much. I know. And it's just like, it won't leave you. You're like, okay. God damn it. I'm going to finish this movie. So eventually I finished the screenplay three years later, three, about three years after I'd started writing it. To be honest, when I finished it, that was such a bar of success for me that I was like, "Woo!" <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my God, if I can do this, I can do anything because it had taken me, I mean, really it had taken over five years, but in a way it had taken like over 10 years because I'd always wanted to write something and I'd always like just battled with so much doubt. So for me to get to the end of something, to write the end, I was like, oh, I've done it. And now I can do anything. If I can do that, anything is possible. And that energy really fueled me over the next year where I just was like, this is gonna get made. Like, how can this not get made? This is, this, I, I mean, I always knew it was going to be good. There it is, and it's going to happen. I kind of, I think at that point, still thought I'd probably sell it and somebody else would rewrite it or something. You know, someone who knew what they were doing. <laughs> but, but that was it. I, I finished it. Now, within one year, I did sell that screenplay. I sold that script. And everyone will tell you, or so many people will tell you, if you go, hang out in screenwriting Facebook groups, you will hear, you know, you got to write... I mean, your first script is probably just your training wheels and you probably won't sell it. Nobody sells their first script. You've got to write three or four scripts before you can get an agent or manager and then you'll sell a script maybe if you're lucky. 
I just didn't subscribe to that kind of viewpoint. I knew that what I had written, like I knew in my heart that there was something special about this story. Like I was so passionate about it. And that's what had fueled me over those years of writing it and the struggles that I had with my doubt. What fueled me was this underlying unshakable belief that something about the screenplay was special. That there was something here that needed to be said because for me, this movie, it wasn't just about two guys. It was about power. It was about people who have voices and people who don't. It was about the responsibility that you have when you do have a voice that people listen to. And it was also about stepping up and owning your power and claiming your own voice. And I just felt so passionate about what this script was about. It was not, it was not just a comedy to me. It was something so much more than that. And to me, to be honest, if you really get into it, it was about me finding my own voice. It's not weird that actually the film is about somebody who's a complete outsider trying to find their voice in Hollywood. It was, the, it was, it was me. And I just felt it so passionately. So there I was, I was now like 33 years old when I finished this script and I was like, I am going, like this script is going to get there. It's going to get made. I'm not going to go into all the details of how it actually happened, the mechanics. I've shared them in other times and other places. <laughs> but within a year, a year after I had finished that first draft, I sold that script. It still blows me in a way, in a sense. It had taken me so many years to get out of my own head and just get it on the page. And then, done. Once I sold the script, things just went... Within a couple of months, I was hired to rewrite a script by the director of Die Hard. True story. Absolutely true story. I mean, it still blows my mind. It's like, what is happening? So I moved from Barcelona, where I was a yoga teacher, to L.A., Sold my first script, got hired to rewrite the script. Now I got hired to write a, a horror film. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> my career is just like taking off here. But, and this speaks to you, Ava, because you were saying that it is a Aza. Sorry. This will speak to you. I had this moment where I was like, there were three films that I had written that were going into production and they were set up, they were paid for, I'd been paid money for them. It was all happening. It was amazing. Three of them. And in the space of one week, and I've told this before, but it still blows me away to this day. In the space of one week, all three of them fell apart. So the, the, the Mickey Rourke script, which I had rewritten, it's just like you're saying, Aza, this, you know, these fantastic producers on board, great production company, Mickey Rourke on board, tons of meetings with Mickey, honing the script to his liking, all the things. And then he pulled out. He pulled out because he got the wrestler. Totally outside of my control. Totally outside of my control. And then John McTiernan, the director of Die Hard, who was going to direct this other movie that I'd rewritten with him. He got arrested by the FBI. He was arrested for lying to the FBI. I mean, you're like, you could not make this shit up, right? It's like, what? <laughs> and then the horror film, they just pulled the plug on it. They just said, we've decided not to do that. We're going ahead with something else. I'm like... Okay, I just went in one in the space of one week from feeling like, oh, I've just like, I'm set up, I am made as a screenwriter to what is happening. Like I was on my knees, on my knees. Just totally like, what, like, how is this possible? Now, by this time, I'd been in Los Angeles for a couple of years and I'd got to know a lot of screenwriters, met a lot of screenwriters, hung out with a lot of screenwriters. And what was kind of fascinating to me was I'd met quite a few who really uh, lived good lives, made good money, got hired for lots of jobs. And yet you would go on IMDb and really nothing had been made. And what I noticed about these screenwriters is that a lot of them were quite bitter, quite jaded, not the happiest people I'd ever met in my life. And I was like, did you get your rights back to the voiceover story? I did. I did. There's still like some money, like if anyone went ahead to produce it, they would still have to owe the production company certain development costs. But I have the rights. I mean, I could go shop at somebody else. And it's, I rewrote it at some point. Anyway, it's another, it's, it's a different story. <laughs> but it's still beautiful. I mean, I, there is something still about that script. 
My husband's always like, you should write that again and get it out. But I don't know. There's a time and a place. So, <clears throat> so I went through this moment where I was just like, what has happened? And I realized for me at that moment that screenwriting success did not mean just getting paid for my work. I could see successful screenwriters on that realm. People who, had, who were getting paid, but nothing was getting made. And I realized that for me, screenwriting success was about the work being made. Like, otherwise it's academic. Now, I don't know about you. Ultimately, I didn't become a writer for the money. Money is good. Don't get me wrong. We all want to get paid. We should get paid. We need to get paid. We deserve to get paid. All the things, right? I love money. But we didn't become writers just for the money. If we were just interested in money, we probably would have chosen a different career path. We would probably be working for, I don't know, a hedge fund, something like that. Most of us have started to write things because we have stories that are coming through us that we desire to share with the world. And it may not be with a huge amount of people that we want to share the story with, but it's, we know there's somebody whose life would be enriched by hearing this story. There's something about this story that deserves to be told. For most of us, I mean, I'd be interested if, if this resonates, just like do a little thing, a little uh, say yes. We didn't get in this just for the money. Screenwriting success is not just about making money. It is part of it and it is important because we need to make money in order to be able to keep doing it. But it's more than that. It's about making films. And that was the point at which I was in my life. I was suddenly like, you know what? Like, it's not about like just making a living at it. Okay, I'm seeing lots of bubbles now. The yes and lots of yeses, right? Screenwriting success will never be just about the money. It's also about the movies getting made. And not just about selling the scripts, you know? And it's that thing, because I just thought if I could just sell the script, that's my goal. It's not about that. It is often the stepping stone to getting it made. But I suddenly realized, like, all I cared about at that point was seeing my work on the screen. I just wanted to see the film on the screen. I'd worked on so many scripts by then, uh, because besides from the three that were set up and getting made, I think there was another three, like I had like six scripts or something. It's about creating, making stories real. Exactly. Seeing them come to life. Exactly. And if they don't come to life, it's sort of like, it's traumatic. As I said it before, like it feels traumatic. Like you put so much into it. There's something like you've given birth to this thing. And for it not to actually become a film just is, is painful. So true. Great money when you can break down the doors, but films are about passion. Yes. And as I say, you want both. I mean, like, I just want to be clear. <laughs> it's not just about getting them made and like, I don't need any money. We need money too. <laughs> but screenwriting will never, like your success as a screenwriter is never going to be just measured by how much money you make. It's also got to be about films actually getting onto the screen and connecting with people. So I know for me, <clears throat> at this point, it's like, I just want the, I want to see the movie on the screen and I want to be able to like sit in an audience and watch it. And I want to know what's working. Like, I just feel like this, at that point, I felt like, I know I can write, like I know it works on the page. I know I can, like I've mastered something about the craft. I can write scripts that sell. I know how to do it. People are happy with my writing. I feel confident in my writing at this point, but I don't actually know if it works on the screen. I don't know if any of you have ever felt this, if you have written scripts, but it was like, it feels academic. Like I know it works on the page, but will it work on the screen? And that was the point at which I decided to write something that I could make myself. I just say, I'm just going to do this. And that's what I did. I wrote a script. It was called Obsolidia. And I wrote it very clearly with the intention of making this myself. So there's no car chases. <laughs> there's nothing difficult. I was just like, I want to write something that is manageable, that I can imagine directing, that I, like, that I could do. And some of you will know, like, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Like, I'd never directed a short. I'd never directed commercials, music videos. I'd never directed anything. I hadn't been to film school. None of the things. But I just decided, screw it. I want to see my movie on the screen. And I don't want to have to hand over control again and, and cross my fingers and hope somebody else makes that happen. I'm going to make it happen. And that's what I did. So I made my movie. I wrote the script, raised the money. <clears throat> I made it happen. And that movie, Obsolidia, we made it for $140,000. So not a lot of money. A lot of money in some ways, of course, but not a lot in other ways. We raised that money, made the movie. 
And within one year, so in January, I was just like, you know, a, a person with a dream, a script and a dream. And we shot it in like April, May. Oh, I, I edited it over the summer. We submitted it to Sundance and at Thanksgiving, we got accepted Sundance. And in January, it, it premiered at Sundance and it won two awards and I became a Sundance award-winning writer and director, which was absolutely mind-blowing to me. It's like, what? And that film went on to get me nominated for a Best Screenplay Award at the Independent Spirit Awards which felt for me as a writer like the most incredible thing if we talk about screenwriting success that was definitely something for me that was like okay like I, this is a level of success that i am so pumped about that i cannot believe to be nominated for that to be for the film to be recognized for the screenwriting just felt like a, like a validation beyond <clears throat> so this is just a little bit about my background now since then i've directed written and directed two more films i've written multiple projects I've had things developed at Fox. I've had things developed at all different kinds of uh, companies. So it went on. It went on. What I want you to know is wherever you are sitting right now, I want you to go right back to the beginning of this class and think about that, what your idea of screenwriting success is. And I want you to know without any shred of doubt that it's possible for you. Because what I believe is completely true is that whatever we really dream of, whatever we truly desire, that whatever like excites us, like it has to excite you. The thought of this thing coming true has to make you sort of feel like, oh my God, imagine if that happened. If you, that's the feeling of it, it's yours. It's yours. But you now have to get, do the work to make it happen because it doesn't just magically happen. You don't just write a script and suddenly have success. It's not just about the craft. Craft is a part of it, but it's not the whole thing. So let's get into this now because what I want to share with you, first of all, is three mistakes to avoid. And they might not be what you'll be thinking. And then I want to give you the four keys. And it's going to be amazing. I, I just, I love what, what has come through for me. There are like the four keys, like the most essential things for you to succeed as a screenwriter. I believe are these four things that I'm going to share with you today. And then after that, I'm going to be telling you about some programs I have that are opening or reopening for registration, and you will be welcome to stick around and hear about them. Before we do that, though, before we do any of that, I'm going to grab my hat. So you may know, <laughs> this is not actually my hat. This is hilarious <laughs> because we're like in Airbnb mode and I'm living out of suitcase and I don't have many of my hats. If you know me normally, I have a lot of hats. They're somewhere in a shipping container between America and Europe at this point. So instead, I have my, my, my five-year-old son's little hat. <laughs> then I've got names in it. So this week, I was running a special little um, competition. And I've decided to extend it. Because I feel like a lot of people didn't know about this. But if you share about this masterclass that we're doing right now, and you share the link for it. So afterwards, if you love this masterclass and you want to share and say to people, hey, guys, this was great. Check it out and share the link you will still have the chance to win the grand prize because I'm going to actually do the draw for that later this week. But right now what I'm going to do is pull out one name and whoever I pull out is going to win a copy of my book, Shoot from the Heart, which is the ultimate guide to actually making your film. So if you heard me talking about Obsolidia, this is like the step-by-step -step of how to make a movie like that, like how to raise $140,000. Where do you get the money? Who do you get it from? What, what are the whole steps to actually make it happen? And it's really broken down and it's beautifully simple. So you can go out and buy the book too, but someone is about to win one. And these names in my hat were all people who actually already shared about the masterclass. If you're just wondering, how did they get their name in the hat? They already shared about it. So I'm going to grab a name and they're all just in there. Da, 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 da. And it's this name. There we go. Let's see. It's Carol. Carol or Dart Wilson, you just want a copy of my book. So Carol, if you would like to, I don't think you're here with us live. I haven't seen you say hi. So if you would like to send me your address, you can DM me your address and I will send you a message after this. You just want a copy of my book and we'll get it sent to you immediately. All right, I'm going to read a couple of these comments and then we're going to dive into the content. Some writers and directors are somehow okay with their work not getting out. I do not understand this, Jody. I do not understand it. 
<laughs> I couldn't have my work always get stuck somewhere. It's a nightmare. It really is. You know, you do like the best work. I, I, I mean, every writer, every screenwriter is carrying some trauma. I just want to say, Aza, like it's not like we, every screenwriter has at least one story of a project that was their heart. It was their baby. It was like their best work and it didn't get made. Every single screenwriter I know has that. And it is part of the gig. It's part of what we do. I often say to people like to be a screenwriter, you have to accept that's part of it. It's kind of like being a mother in the 1700s. This is how I always think of it. So I'm from Scotland. And if you walk around old graveyards, you will see gravestones from the 1700s. And it's like these poor women, you know, they would have like 10 kids and five of them would die before the age of five. It's heartbreaking. You just think, how did that mother bear that? How did she handle that? Like, so awful. So what they did, of course, was have lots of children. And I always say to screenwriters, of course, we're obsessed with certain projects, but we have to always know that there's more. We have to trust that. We have to develop other things. We should never like let it just be that one because that will destroy us then if it doesn't work out. Have lots of babies. Have lots of babies. Screenplay babies. So keep having screenplay babies. Trust that like whatever it is that you were channeling there, you can do it again. There's more. There's infinite. There's an abundance of ideas. You're always getting better. It will all be good. All right. Um, Nelly said, filmmaking to me is about passing on powerful messages, shaking perceptions, inspiring people and making them feel less alone. I love your vision, Nelly. Share love and humanity to, and contribute to making the world a better place. Ah, oh, I love that vision. Oh, thank you. Abby said, Ups, Lydia, if anyone hasn't seen it here, then stop what you're doing and go see it. Oh, thank you. It's on Apple TV on Amazon. Oh, good to know. <laughs> Yay. And everyone's saying congratulations to Carol. Yes. Yeah, Aza. Ev all of us have that. I mean, it's just welcome to the Screenwriters Club. Great advice. I have about 20 scripts in various stages. Two are now being considered. Yes. It really is like you've got to just like keep going, keep going. It's part of, it's just part of the gig. It's part of this life. We can hold it. We can hold it. Although, I mean, I'm just honestly though, Aza, I have a couple of projects. There's one in particular that just still breaks my heart. The Mickey Rourke one breaks it a little bit, but not entirely because I did make good money out of it and it brought so many good things to my life. They didn't feel completely awful. Um, but I had one script that I spent probably a year on longer than I should have. I was absolutely obsessed with it and it was a TV thing and it actually got developed. And I mean, again, I got funding and it got developed, but it never got made and it, it still bugs me because it was good. It was really good. All right, let's get into the mistakes. So three mistakes to avoid. The first mistake, and these are things that I believe if you engage in any of these things, you are going to block your success, right? So number one, comparing your journey to other people's. People say comparison is the thief of joy. I think it's worse than that. I think it can be the thief of our dreams because often comparing ourselves to other people leads us to feel like we're too late. It leads us to think we're not good enough. It leads us to think all kinds of things that are not true. Every single person is on their own journey. Every single person is on their own journey. If you start like thinking about other screenwriters and either putting them up on pedestals where it's sort of like, they're so brilliant and I'll never be that good. Or you do that thing where you're like, oh, they're crap, but how do they get their stuff made? And you feel sort of some venom about them. Like, how come they got selected for that? They're no good anyway, right? Either of these kinds of things is not going to help you at all. I want you to know this, you are not in competition with any other screenwriter, despite what competitions would have you think. You are not in competition with other screenwriters. There are so many places for our films. There's enough space for everybody and for every voice. I truly believe that. You are a unique, beautiful, incredible, miraculous being. You have a very unique movie to share with the world, but you won't do that if you're busy comparing yourself to other people, trying to copy other people, emulate other people, tear other people down, put other people up. So be inspired by other people, but see them as your equals. Yes, even that Oscar winning screenwriter. You're a writer, you're an artist, you're incredible. Your success will come when you are you and you're like unapologetically you. 
And when you see yourself as equal to your peers, because you are equal, even if you're not as far as ahead, if they've been doing it longer and they've like, whatever, that doesn't matter. You are equal to every other screenwriter in this whole world. You're a writer. Okay. So do not compare yourself to others. Do not let yourself go down that track. It will slow you down if it doesn't even completely derail you. So don't do it. All right. Just appreciate others, but don't compare yourself. Second mistake. The second mistake is putting a time limit on your goals here. Now, if you've been in any of my other sessions, particularly things about energetics, you'll hear me talking a lot about this. Time trips us up. It really trips us up. We have this idea that somehow the journey between here and there should take a certain amount of time. I guess because we're conditioned into it from other parts of our lives. Like, if I want to bake a cake, I look at the recipe and it says, it will take one hour once you put it in the oven. Or I want to drive from Denver to Los Angeles and I put in my GPS and I'm like, okay, it's going to take me 14 hours. Right? And I have like an ETA. And I feel like on our path as screenwriters, we often feel like we should have an ETA as well, right? <laughs> I mean, who here? We all want an ETA. It's like estimated time of arrival to your ultimate success. Six months, two weeks, and five days. But hell yeah. But the problem is that success as screenwriting takes its own time. And it will unfold according to a divine timing which you do not control. And if you can surrender the timeline... And just trust in it. Trust that your success is coming. It's inevitable as long as you keep at it. As long as you keep at it. As long as you keep inspired, you keep writing stuff, you keep moving, you keep taking action, you keep learning, you keep growing, you keep excited about it, your success is inevitable. But what will trip us up is when we have some idea that things should happen by a certain time and if it hasn't happened by now, maybe it means it's never going to happen. Maybe it means we're too late. I mean, if I was going to have success, it should have happened by now. So the problem for so many screenwriters, I feel like, is we entangle ourselves into timelines that don't serve us. I told you earlier, it took me three years to write my first script. I don't want anyone to take three years to write a first script. I mean, I do not want anyone to do that. I, it shouldn't have taken me that long. If I could have had good mentorship, if I could have had good support, I, it would not have taken that long. It took that long because I was trying to do it on my own. But at the end of the day, it took three years. Was it wrong that it took three years? Would it have been better if it took one year? It would have been better in some ways. I mean, it would have cut out some of the suffering that I went through and just the, the doubt and the confusion and the overwhelm and things that I wouldn't wish on anyone. But at the end of the day, it took the time it took. Everything takes the time it takes. And we don't know how long that is until we're in it, until we do it. You don't know if your cake is baked until it's baked. There is no ETA on this. So if you're not where you are, where you want to be with your script, i.e. you haven't finished it yet, i.e. you haven't sold it yet, instead of going like, oh my gosh, this is taking too long, it's like, it's just taking the time it's taking. And it's absolutely fine. My, my cake is not baked yet, but it doesn't mean it's not going to be baked. Now, on that note, too, your script is not good enough until it's good enough. What do I mean by this? So many of us put pressure on ourselves to write something amazing with the first draft. Like, and, you know, I told you about me when I was sitting writing my first draft. I was like, oh, my God, those 10 pages are terrible. I'm terrible. I'm never going to write something good. Hello, welcome to screenwriting. Screenwriting 101. The first draft is going to suck. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. Perhaps there are some people who write amazing first drafts. I am certainly not one of them. But what I learned after that first experience was it doesn't matter. Your first draft doesn't freaking matter how bad it is. No one's going to see your first draft. The first draft is just like really throwing the clay onto the wheel. It's not making the perfect pot. It's just getting the clay on the wheel. It can be as messy and sloppy as you like. It can be wet and soggy. It can be whatever. It doesn't matter because it's not done. First draft is just, it's just the beginning. Things take the time they take. So the whole thing of time 
If you can just surrender time completely, you're going to quicken your success. I guarantee it. Whereas if you start putting pressure on time and, oh, well, if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now, that kind of thinking. Don't. Don't, 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 don't. There's so many stories of amazing films that were made after very long times. Now, I'm sure you know them. I'm sure you've read about them. Things are like, I, you know, it took 12 years to set it up to 20 years. And then we won the Oscar. It was worth it. It takes the time it takes. So the third mistake. I'm just going to see this. I find setting time limits for small pieces of a larger goal, like finishing five pages by the end of the week, please, is quite useful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so everything I teach, Kate, and you'll know this, like in my program, Write Your Script in Eight Weeks, guess what? There's a time frame. <laughs> You're going to get it done in eight weeks. <laughs> so, so I believe it's completely useful to have uh, th those kind of deadlines and those kind of goals. But this is this bigger picture thing. I would love for your goal to be when you think about the screenwriting success that we talked about at the beginning of the class, your vision of what that means, that like it gets to happen when it happens and you're not going to beat yourself up because it didn't happen yesterday. The overall goal is a lifelong process. Exactly. Yes. So mistake number three. This is a big one. This is a big one. But this is what I see that really stops most people from having any success as a screenwriter. It's that they give up out of fear. So that looks like something slightly different at every stage, but it is ultimately the same thing. It might be before you even start writing where it's like, oh, I can't start because I'm like afraid I'm shit. I'm afraid I'm no good. I'm afraid I'm not talented. I'm afraid it's going to be terrible. It might be when you're actually writing it and you're like going, this is no good. I'm not a good writer. It's terrible. Why am I wasting my time? It might be when you finish. Oh, my God. The number of screenwriters I've seen who do this. They write the script. They revise the script. They're excited about the script. Then they submit it to like two competitions and they don't get anywhere in them. And they're just like. Never to be seen again. So you give up because you quit. Or maybe you're like, you've got more chutzpah than that and you push through and you submit to a lot of places. But a year later, you're like, oh, just hasn't worked. Time thing. See how that time thing works in with the fear thing? But there's fear. Fear kicks in. Fear kicks in somewhere along the journey. Fear that it's not going to work. Fear that you're not good enough. Fear that you're not talented. Fear that the script's not good enough. Fear that the game is too loaded. Fear that the world is too unfair. Fear that you're too late. That fear that you're too old. Fear that you don't look right. Fear whatever it is. When the fear wins and we quit, don't do it. This is a big mistake, right? That is probably the number one mistake, the number one reason that people won't have success. Because here's the deal. If you commit to this path as a screenwriter, if you decide, like, I am going to have that success, like the thing that I am imagining in my head is the screenwriting success, whatever that is for you, whatever that is, I'm going to experience that. I am calling it in. I am like, that is my North Star. Claudine, welcome. Like, I am setting my goal on that. And nothing's going to stop me. Nothing's going to stop me. I know it's going to get hard in places. I know that I might be lost sometimes. I know there'll be days where I want to cry, days where I want to give up, but I am going there and I am not going to stop. And every time that it doesn't work, I'm going to see what I can learn and I'm going to keep going. That makes you unstoppable. There's no world in which you won't get the success. That success that you dream of, you will get it if that is your attitude. Everything is just an opportunity for you to learn and to grow. There is no failure on this path. You've never failed. You're just learning and growing. And if you take that attitude, I guarantee you will get what you want. Whatever that is, that vision that you hold, it's yours. But that persistence, that unwillingness to give up, that unwillingness to give in to fear. And let me tell you, it's not that you're going to never feel the fear. <laughs> Holy crap, you're, you're going to feel it. There are going to be times on this journey that you will doubt yourself. There will be times that you will want to give up. There will be times where you're just like, this, this isn't working. That's okay. You're a human. You get to feel those things. You feel them, you process them, and you keep going. 
that's what's going to get you there. And that's why aligning yourself with that vision of your success and what that means to you is so important because that's what will fuel you when the going gets tough. All right, my lovelies, let's get into the four keys now. Has anybody got any question on those? Are you feeling it? Let me know that you're still here. <laughs> and we will go into thank you. Yes, fears of, yes, it really is. It really is. And we cannot let it win, Les. Like once we know it, we're like, I see you fear. I get you. It's okay. I'm a human. I love you. But go away because I have places that I'm going and you're not going to stop me. All right, so the four keys, let's talk about them. Number one, clarity. The first key to success as a screenwriter in your screenwriting is clarity. And when I wrote this word down and it really came to me very clearly, Sharon fears my problem. It's the problem, Sharon. When we peel away the problems, it's always there, but you can overcome it. I want you to know that. And we'll talk a little bit more about how and why later in this. So number one key, clarity. What do I mean by that? And why did it come? Oh, Daniel, I'm so happy you're here. Why did this, why is this key so important? Clarity. You know, I wrote down one, you got to be really clear about the story that you're telling. Clear. It's got to be clear. Screenwriting itself is an art of economy. It has to be clear. The story has to be clear. The characters have to be clear. It's got to be as clear as possible. Clear. Now, I believe, though, it's not just about clarity of the story. It's like clarity of the kind of film you're making, clarity of what this film is, because your job is not just to write the story and to write the best story you can, but then your job is obviously to get it out into the world. You're going to be the first person to market it. And you have to be clear about what this film is. And I think like your secret weapon as a screenwriter is this level of clarity where it's like, I know exactly what this is. I know exactly what the story is. I can pitch it like that. I, I, you know, I can see in the screenwriting itself how to like release everything that is not my screenplay. So it's not a muddy screenplay. It's clear. And then though, the clarity is also in your energy. Because I believe that one of the keys to creating success in this world or anything is being a clear channel of having clear energy. When you are in a state of clarity, you will attract good things to you. But when you're kind of like, oh, no, kind of muddy and fuzzy, and I can feel that energy from people. When they talk to me about their screenplays or their films, I can feel it. There's either a clarity around them where it's like they know exactly what they're talking about. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly where they're heading. They've got their eye on where they're going with it. And they're like unwavering. It's so powerful. And I can also feel it when it's like, I'm not really sure. Not really sure where we're heading with this. And I'm not really sure where it is or what it is. And this is a real problem for screenwriters. So your first key to success, and I want you to write that down, clarity. And if anything comes to you in this moment about what, like, how can you be more clear about what you're doing? Where are you not clear? Because clarity is absolutely one of your keys. And when you get clear, it's going to like skyrocket you. When you're just like, I know exactly what I'm doing with this. Now, the second key, and I've all the keys start with the letter C so that you have a, like a memory bank. It's going to help make it easy for you to remember these. But the second C. And the second C is craft. Now, I think it's probably obvious to say it, but a certain level of mastery of the craft of screenwriting is required to have success at this. I don't think your script has to be perfect. I don't think you have to be the best screenwriter in the world to have success. That is not necessary at all. Look around at movies that get made and you'll see plenty of movies get made. And well, you know, they're not necessarily like the best, right? So that's not our standard here when we're talking about craft. But there is a certain level at which it needs to, it needs to reach. It needs to be good enough. 
And there's a certain level of craft that is essential. You need to know how to tell a story and to tell it well. You need to understand the rules of screenwriting, even if you're going to break them. You need to craft good sentences. You need to... I have happy commitment in there. Oh, I should add that. That'll be the fifth key. <laughs> you need to craft good sentences. There needs to be style to your screenplay. Style. Like, that's what makes it pop. You might have the best story in the world. Like, you might have, like a idea for a movie that's just like, it is like amazing. But unless you have a certain mastery of the craft of screenwriting, it's never going to work. So you have to devote yourself to mastering the craft, at least a little bit. Like you don't need to be the, I say the like the, the ultimate Jedi master of screenwriting, but you have to like get to a certain level. It should see, I mean, as I say, in a way this seems obvious, but <laughs> there seem to be a lot of people who think that they could write a great screenplay without reading screenplays. And people, you know, complete screenplays and are like, why is this not working? And you have a look at it and you're like, it's not really fun to read. So learning craft and really dedicating yourself to always getting better because there's never a point at which is like, now I've learned all the craft and I'm done. There's always like, how do I do this better? How do I write better dialogue? How do I make my scenes even more snappy? How do I get those action lines to pop even better? There's always like a next level. And as I say, what we are not aiming for here is perfection. This is not about your script has to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect. But it has to be good enough. And the good enough comes from like really dedicating yourself to craft. You've got to be curious about it. You've got to want to learn. You've got to like observe other screenwriters. If you're not reading screenplays, I have no idea. I don't know what to say. You've got to read other screenplays. How are other people doing it? What do great screenplays look like? How are they doing them? What made them good? Learn, like open yourself. And honestly, this is like that journey that if you want to succeed, and we talked about this thing about giving up because of fear, right? And it's like giving up. Sure, you might write a screenplay, you might write two, and they don't get the results that you want. Or you can either just keep doing the same thing and writing more, or you might just give up. But how about you just like go, how do I make these better? How do I do better on the next one? How do I, how do I keep evolving my skills? Now, I think it's fascinating with screenwriting that a lot of people do sort of have this idea that, you know, they're, they've got a great idea for the movie. Everyone's got a great idea for a movie, right? <laughs> if you've ever said to anybody in your life, I write screenplays, I guarantee you, right? You're at a party and you say, yeah, I'm a screenwriter. It's kind of like being a doctor and everybody's like, oh, could you have a look at this? I have this little ailment. Could you do Right? It's like that, except it's always like, I have this great idea for a movie. <laughs> Right? Everybody's got a great idea for a movie. But the thing is, a lot of people seem to think that, you know, just having a great idea is enough and that they'll just write it and then it will be brilliant and it'll be amazing. And they're not applying themselves to learning the craft, like really learning about the tools of screenwriting. It's not enough. And the sort of arrogance of that makes me think of, you know, if, if you were wanting to write a great concerto, a, a piano concerto or something like this, if you're right, wanting to write a beautiful piece of music, you wouldn't expect to just like, <laughs> you know, I've got this great idea and I'm just going to write a symphony. You would know. This is going to take dedication to learning a craft. I'm going to have to learn how to write music and read music and I'm going to learn all these things, right? It's, it's not just going to like, I just have a great idea now, I just pop it out. There's a lot more to it than that. Good screenplay is not just a good idea. Because the thing about scripts is they are not in themselves work so far. I think about this a lot and it just really fascinates me. And this is why if a script doesn't get made, it's kind of a sad thing because it's not actually a work of art. It's the blueprint for one. It's the blueprint is the plans for a work of art. And if you think about it a little bit more, I think a script isn't just the blueprint for a work of art. It's also the sales pitch for that work of art. Like a script in itself is selling the movie. It's not just like the blueprint for the movie, it's also selling the movie. Because in order for a film to get made, and what, like we said before, 
screenwriting success definitely involves at some point the movie being on the screen. Right? It's not just about getting a paycheck for it. It's about the movie being on the screen. Now, how does it get on the screen? A lot of people have to fall in love with that movie and get excited about it. It can't just be so-so. It can't be just kind of okay. Oh, Renata, no worries. Like, the script has to sell the movie. It has to make people excited for it. It has to make them go, like, wow, this would be a great movie. And that's craft. It's like through learning craft, that you'll develop style, that you'll be able to pitch the movie within the script and get people excited about it so they want to make it. Absolutely crucial. Craft. Number three. Number three. I'm just going to look. Kate said, my other coach for screenwriting said that when he asked me about a question, where it's going, he's pleased that I have it right there. I know it's clear. Yes, clarity is important. He also said my writing is really good. I should actually write instead of thinking about writing. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. So number three, the third keys. We've got clarity. We've got craft. Number three. Confidence. Confidence. And confidence is, I think, the trump card. I hate, I'm, I'm sorry to use that word now. It has like these kind of weird connotations, but you know what I mean. It's the winning card. Confidence. <sighs> the thing about movies and scripts is, to quote William Goldman, the great screenwriter, no one knows anything. No one. And this always fascinates me about the movie industry. I don't think there's any, I don't know, like any other industry where people know less <laughs> about what will actually work. And if you think that's not true, if you're like, no, that's not true, people, people know, then why do studios spend hundreds of millions of dollars making turkeys? Think about it. I mean, really, I can't even believe I'm still in shock about the stories about this Batgirl movie, if you haven't read about it. They spent $90 million making a movie that they're never going to release because it's not any good. Because it's so bad that whatever it would cost to fix it just doesn't make sense. They're better just cutting their losses. $90 million making a movie that they are never going to release. Think about that. Nobody knows anything. Did they spend $90 million making a movie because they thought it was going to be a shit show? No, they spent $90 million making a movie because they thought it was going to be fantastic. And if you don't know about this story, you can Google it after this. You can fact check me. Right? $90 million. But there's, always, there's so many examples, right? There are so many examples of movies that have cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make. Hundreds. And they're absolutely awful. Now, I have this thing about films. Nobody ever sets out to make a bad film. Ever. Ever. Like everybody always sets out when they're, you know, when that movie gets greenlit and they're going into production, everybody always thinks this is going to be the one. <gasps> this is going to be so good. This is going to be such a great movie. People are going to love this movie. It's going to premiere at that festival. It's going to sell for that much. It's going to make so much money, right? We're all like, that's every movie. Nobody's ever like, this movie's going to suck. So everybody's looking at that script from day one going, this is going to be great. And like I said to you, the craft, they've sold, the, the script has sold the movie, even though the movie is a turkey. Now, the other thing that has sold it, though, and I always come back to this, you will never have success as a screenwriter as long as you are not confident about your own work. I want you just to like, let that really land for you. If you are not confident about your work, like you're like, I don't really know if it's good. Let's find out. I'm going to put it into a couple of competitions and, you know, maybe we'll see. And I'll try to submit it and I'll pitch it and, you know, maybe I'll get lucky and maybe someone's going to like it. I mean, maybe it is good enough. If that's where you are, just like, okay, don't give up, but you need to do some inner work. You need to shift your beliefs about yourself and your work. Otherwise, it's never going to work. What sells scripts and what gets things made is the screenwriter being the first person to be passionate and confident about the project. When you are 100% confident about it and you can talk to anyone about it and you know in your heart, like you have this, you have this faith in your work which is unshakable. 10 people could tell you no and you're just going to be like, they're lost. 
They don't get it. They don't see it. Maybe there's something for me to learn here. It's not that I need to stick my hand and be like, they're assholes or something, right? But it's like, I know this is going to be good. I know it. This is good. This is like easily better than 80% of movies out there. Right? Now, as long as you have that level of confidence, you are going to succeed. How do you think some of the worst scripts you've ever read got sold? Have you ever thought about it? Like, you know, you're watching that movie and you're like, oh my God, the script is terrible. How did the person sell it? They went into meetings, man, and they, like, they sold it. And people were like, wow, this is really good. Because what do we know about movies? Nobody knows anything. Nobody knows anything. But somebody else who's like so passionate, so confident, so certain, like they're 100% rock solid certain, makes you pause. If you're a producer, you're a money person, you're an investor for movies, like that level of confidence is going to make you pause. Because you're like, ooh, well, they seem really certain actually. If they're like wavery, and we can sense it in somebody, you can sense it. This is, I mean, it's energetics. You have to have confidence in yourself. Now, does that mean, again, that you have to believe your work is perfect? No. Good God, no. Confidence doesn't require perfection. Your work doesn't need to be perfect for you to be confident about it. You just have to know in your heart of hearts that this is good. It's got a real shot. And if you've got that, you're good to go. Now, you might be asking yourself, but I've never done this before. How can I be confident when I've never done it before? And I don't know if my work is any good. Like, it would be easy to be confident if I've already won an award. It'd be easy to be confident if someone had already given me money. But I'm going to give you a big thing here. If we wait to be confident until we have validation, the validation is never going to come. The validation that we seek outside ourselves, it will never come so long as we are seeking it and we're not sure and we're like requiring it. Like, I'm not going to believe it's any good till somebody else tells me it is. But so many screenwriters, that's their headspace. I've worked with, I mean, I've seen this <laughs> a lot. <laughs> it's like, once somebody else tells me it's good, then I'll know it's good. But until then, the jury's out. No. You decide. And when you decide, something shifts. The way other people will read your script, the way they correspond to it, the way they respond to it, it shifts. It changes. It's your passion, your confidence that is going to make it happen. And if you don't have that, you've got to get it. You've got to find your way to build it. And the good news is you can build it. This is not something like, oh my God, I'm just not a confident person. It's okay. I wasn't a confident person either. And I know that might be hard to believe when I sit here now and yak away for hours to people. <laughs> but when I started out as a screenwriter, I was not confident. I told you, I mean, my path to being a writer struggle. So much doubt. But I did the inner work. I did the work. And that's what shifted the needle. And when you get that level of confidence, you're unstoppable. Unstoppable in every way. Unstoppable writing your script. Unstoppable marketing it. Unstoppable selling it. Unstoppable. And that's what I want for you. That, that level of confidence. So third key is confidence. The fourth key, it could have been commitment, Abby. I love that. I love that. I say, I think we're going to have to add that on as the fifth key. And I'll just pretend it was a fifth key. <laughs> My fourth key that I have, and I really believe in this one, is community. I believe having people in your life who are supporting you, who are cheering you on, who are holding you up when you are down on your knees, who are relating to you, who understand what this path is, will make all the difference to you actually unlocking success. Now, another aspect of community is this. You can't make a film on your own. It's not a one-man band show. It's not like writing a book. You write a book and, I don't know, maybe you find a lit agent and you don't have to involve that many people. Still, there's some people, but it's not maybe so many. But making a film, if you don't want to deal with people, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> So community, developing a community, having a community of people, being a part of the community. People you can talk to who will hold your hand and hold you steady when you want to quit. People who understand what you're going through. People that you can support in return. 
This changes everything. The reason that many of us will quit and we give up, like I said before, is because we have fear, right? Because fear kicks in. At some point in the journey, the fear kicks in. And the fear becomes too big and it outweighs the dream. The fear becomes bigger than the dream. But when we have a community, it helps us weather those fears. It's like, wait a second. She's doing it. He's doing it. We're in this together. We can do this. And honestly, like getting into that, it will change everything. A lot of us don't have it. I mean, a lot of us, our families think we're... The word bat was coming to mind. Like they were like, why are you doing this? You were never going to sell a script. Are you crazy? So in all honesty, if that is your family, you can still love your family. You don't have to disown them. What I would recommend is don't talk to them about your screenwriting. <laughs> right? <laughs> If they don't get it, if they're like looking at you, what like, you know, you're like, I am writing a screenplay. And they're like, ah, uh, yeah, you're crazy. If that's like how your family are, maybe it's even your partner, your husband, your wife. Maybe it's your, your, your brother, your sister, your roommates. They're like, oh my God, she's bonkers. Does she really think she's going to write a script and sell it? She's totally lost the plot. If that's where you are with people in your life, it's totally cool. You can love them. You can hang out with them. You can have all kinds of good times with them. Don't talk about your script to them. Find people who understand. Honestly, this is like, this, this is probably the biggest piece of gold I'll give to you in this whole session. <laughs> like, do not talk to your script about people who don't understand this stuff because they will knock it out of you. They will feed the fear. They will be like, oh, that, well, yeah, well, have fun with that. Don't let their energy take it out of you because here's the thing, going back to the beginning of this session, what you dream of is meant for you. I want you to, again, just to bring in your vision of what success, screenwriting success means to you. It's meant for you. In order to make it happen though, you're gonna have to be a little bit crazy because truth is artists are crazy, we're crazy. <laughs> we have ideas in our heads and we wanna make them real in the world. We hear voices. We invent people. We invent whole freaking stories. They seem more real to us than the people that we actually talk to at times. Who hasn't experienced that? Like you're like, oh my God, having conversations in your head. <laughs> we are bonkers. And we actually believe in it. We're actually like, oh my God, this would be so great. We're nuts. So you want to be around people that just like get that. And who are going to be like, yeah. <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going. Because your dreams are there for a reason. The story is coming through you for a reason. And I believe truly that the stories that we are here to tell, they come through us. You didn't create this. You didn't invent you. It is something that is like, it's out there in the quantum field. It wants to be birthed into 3D reality. And it has chosen you as the channel. And your job is just to get yourself out of the way and let it come through <laughs> and to trust it, to trust it all, to trust the story, to trust your intuitions, to trust your dreams, to trust that what you dream of is meant for you, that it is coming for you, that you're going to get to that success because you are. Because why wouldn't you? And when you have that level of faith, and you have these keys, you have clarity about it. You know exactly what you want. You just know exactly what you want and where you're going. Right? I know where I'm going. And other people might think it's crazy and it's, it's not realistic and it's out of this world. But I know exactly where I'm going. And you have that clarity. And when you have craft and respect for the craft, like you're willing to do the work to get better. So important. And you develop this confidence. You're like, you know what? And confidence comes in part from the clarity, from the craft, from the community. Like these things, they all feed each other. It's not like one exists separate from the other. Because your confidence increases. Like the better you get at your craft, and there'll be days that you're like, you look at some of the stuff you write, and you're like, God, that is good. That dialogue is freaking good. That scene is good. This is good. 
And when you get that, you start to get more confident. You're like, I know this is good. Because I know what a good script looks like. I've read enough of them. I know this is good. This has got something. And then you have community and they hold you when things are hard. They inspire you and they lift you up and they make you feel like, yeah, this is doable. This is real. This isn't crazy. Because it's not. It's not. There have never been more opportunities ever for people to get stuff made. There is absolutely no reason that you cannot do this, that you cannot have the success that you dream of. There's absolutely not one reason other than you don't get out of your own way. You make some bullshit stories up about why it's more difficult for you. You give in to the fear. You give in to the noise of other people telling you you're wasting your time. But that's the only reason that you won't get the success you want. So I'm going to be wrapping. We're coming to the end of the actual, the material for today. You haven't even reached the level of crazy I am at. <laughs> the fourth key is my number one. Crazy is another C, by the way. There are so many C's, right? Abby, because crazy is one. All the crazy. Commitment is definitely one. Courage is another one. Courage is a, a big one. There's a lot of C's. But I want to reach, wrap this up in a sense for you. Oh, thank you, Les. Community. Love it. Everyone should join the network. So I'm going to be talking about the network in a little bit if you want to stick around, if you're interested. And it is an incredible group. It's wonderful encouragement. It really is wonderful encouragement. I'm going to talk about it. It's encouragement. It's community. It's the whole thing. I like commitment as a fifth key. I like it too. We got a fifth key today, commitment. And commitment is super important. Do not give up. Commit. Commit, commit, commit to your path. And stay on it. And you will get there. But I want to give you one last one too. Something that I think is like the ultimate. The ultimate key. It's really on this path as an artist. Learning to trust yourself. To be guided by your intuition. To open your channel. To write what is true from your heart. Not what you think will sell, not what you think other people will be impressed by, not what you think the market wants. But what you feel absolutely guided and called to write. You want to have success as a screenwriter? That's the path. And then having the wherewithal to keep listening to the nudges all the way along the path, to follow your own intuition, to trust your nudges, to trust what feels right to you, to take the next step, but really to listen to your heart. Get out of your head. Stop trying to be logical. Stop overthinking it. Stop looking outside yourself. For like how to do it, the clues. Trust your inner guidance. Now that doesn't mean don't get mentorship and don't have help and things like that because I believe mentorship can accelerate your path so much. What I would say though is trust your intuitions around that. Don't overthink things. When you go, that feels like the right step, take it. What we often do is we go like, maybe I should do that, but maybe, hmm, let me think. Mm, pros and cons. I don't know, what if it doesn't work? Hmm. And we do this with everything. We do this with like what we're gonna write about. What, what script should I write? Should I write about this? Should I write about that? Let me think about it. Let me write pros and cons. Let me do research. Let me talk to people. Let me decide. Think, 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 think. Don't do it. Have a spark, follow it, light the fire. Whatever it is, trust yourself. This is the path to success as any kind of artist. If you're doubting yourself, talking yourself out, but what if it doesn't work? What if I write that screenplay and I don't sell it? What if it's not good enough? What if that was a crazy idea? People write to me all the time and say this sort of thing. They go, is it possible to write a screenplay about this? Would it be possible to have five protagonists? Would it be possible to do this? I'm like, okay. 
If you can imagine it, it's possible. Try it. It's the worst thing that can happen. The worst thing that happens is it doesn't work. Hmm. But you've learned something. You've grown. It'll get better. But if we sit in the fence the whole time thinking about what will be, you know, what will really work? How do I make sure it works? What if it doesn't work? Never do anything. So we'll use that fifth key of commitment. But commit to following your own heart. Commit to never doubting yourself. Commit to not talking yourself out of things. Commit to just taking action when you feel called to take it. And this is, this is it. This is like the path to success at screenwriting. I was able to write my first screenplay because I did feel genuinely guided to write that. I just felt so called to it. It felt so like my passion. My, my film too that went to Sundance and won awards. I'm like, if I could say in a nutshell how I was able to crack that, something that seems so impossible to make a film and get it into Sundance. I mean, that's like, you know, less than 2% of films submitted that year got a slot in the festival. I think it was like 1.6% of films got a, got a slot. I was in that 1.6%. It's not, it's not likely. How did it happen? I was 100% in tune with just my own intuition, doing what felt right. Absolutely paying no attention to what I thought people would like, paying no attention to what I thought would be the smart thing to do. The more that we can get out of our heads and into our hearts, the greater chance we have of success. Because it's from your heart that you're gonna create the success. It's never from your head. When you're trying to be smart and strategic and do everything right and be logical, in that mode, what you will get is predictable results and predictable results are you don't sell your script, you don't finish your script, it doesn't go anywhere. That's predictable. You want that 1.6% result? Get in your heart. Trust it, even if it's crazy. Oh my God, no one would watch this film. Who would watch this? Who would buy this? Who would care about this? Me, I would care about it, I freaking love it. Write it. <laughs> That's where your magic is. That's where you'll have success. I remember seeing one review, or an audience review from Obsolity and someone was like, I can't believe some of them even thought that they could make a film like this about Buddhist philosophy, about climate change. I mean, if you see that film, it's quirky. It's, it is extremely quirky. Because I just didn't give a shit. I was just like, you know what? I just want to make something that I love. You make what you love. You work from your heart. You're going you're gonna to succeed but work from your head and it's going to just take you around the block 10 times and you're still not going to be there. So that's the parting shot for this. Endeavor for fifth cleverness. <laughs> but I'm aware that what may be clever to some is insulting to others. Oh, you're welcome, Abby. I think that might be the most important thing you've shared. Write your passion. Absolutely. Right about what you enjoy and you'll be surprised how good it comes out 100 percent. and i always have this thing and it's, it's actually a quote from my movie obsolete of one person loves something right one person loves something in the movie it's like if one person loves something it can never be obsolete but i believe if one person loves something somebody else will love it too but it's got to be from the heart it's got to be that sort of like genuine passion but the same with actually your whole path as a screenwriter get out of your head and into your heart be moved by your passion, follow the inner nudges, be inspired, be excited, be crazy, be you, be fully you, and the success will come. But if you're in your head trying to like think about what would people like, how should I do this, what's the smart way of doing this, it's gonna be a hard road. My favorite films are so quirky, yeah, mine too. Babe Ruth struck out 1,330 times but also hit 714 home runs, amazing. Andre, oh, I'm so happy. So that's what I have for you today in terms of this session. I hope this has been amazing for you. I hope that some of this is just like hit home, opened something up, fired some synapses, got you like excited, right? Because I know that you can do whatever it is that you dream of. I know that. And if you know it too, there's nothing to stop you. Like I've handed you these keys today. And I hope you just like take them and go, okay, I get it. Oh, thank you, Abby. That you just feel these keys and go, okay, this is it. This is what I need to do. I know it. Like, and I can stay on the path. And I'm, you know, if I really apply these things, my success is inevitable. Because you believing your success is inevitable is what makes it so. 
Because when you believe your success is inevitable, anything that happens along the path, it's just like another step in the journey. Like if you know you're going to get there in the end, it's always like, okay, this was an unexpected turn in the journey. I thought that movie was going to get made. Hmm, guess it's not. What next? What now? And you'll always keep evolving and you'll always keep growing. But these keys, honestly, like this, this is it right here. And if you hone these and you just keep working on your craft and you stay clear, clear in your intent, clear in your energy, clean it up, clean up any resentments, clean up any fear, clean up any bitterness that you have, clean up, clean up any doubts that you have, clean it up, clarify yourself, stay in the energy of clarity. It's going to be amazing. And get that confidence, sparkle it. And find your community, find your tribe, find your people who are going to cheer you on because honestly, that is one of the most powerful things. My teacher Thich Nhat Hanh, a Zen master, he used to say, it's easier to get to the ocean as part of a river than as a single drop of water. I feel that so strongly, I know it to be true. Together we're stronger, together we, we can make magic, but on our own, it's like lone wolf, it's a much harder. All right, let me have a look at the comments. And then after that, I've got one more hat, hat pull to do. So there's one more book to be won. And like I said, I am going to do the next, today is Friday. I'm going to do on Friday, on Wednesday, the 21st, there is going to be another draw. And the draw is going to be for an amazing prize, right? So this is going to be for a book right now. I'm going to pull a name for a book. But on Wednesday, there's going to be another draw and your name can go in my hat. All you have to do is share about this masterclass. Just share about it on the social media and tag me or send me a screenshot of it so that I can see that you shared it. And if you share it and you just share something like, hey, I did this masterclass. It was a lot of fun. I learned some things. Here's the link. Just do that. Your name will go in the hat. And on Wednesday, what the draw is going to be is you will get one year in the network, which is a value of $999. One whole year in the network. And we're going to talk about the network in a minute. But beyond that, you're also going to get a one-to-one -one session with me. So this is just to be clear. It's not, a, it's not a script reading session. I'm not going to read your script and give you notes on that. This is just like a one-to-one -one session. 30 minutes where we just, we talk. You tell me what's going on and we talk and I coach you. And that has a value of $497. So this is like a $1,500 prize. And it will skyrocket your success as a screenwriter. So if you want to be in the running to win that, that's like $1,500 prize, you know what to do. Just share about this masterclass. Share on your social media. Take a screenshot of it and, and uh, send it to me. It has to be either on your Facebook page or on your Instagram. All right? So let's now see who won the other book. One more book. Ah, uh, my son's hat. Let's see. And it is. Aha! It's Ace Chapman. I am not surprised, you guys. I am so not surprised because Ace has posted about the masterclass. His name is in here like 10 times, at least more. I don't know. I wrote them all out earlier. So something I should tell you is the more often you post, the more time your name's going to hat. Ace, you just want a copy of the book. So congratulations. Send me your snail mail address if I don't have it so we can send you the book. And again, if you want to be in the running for winning a year in the network, plus a one-to-one -one session with me, you know what to do. All right, let me see. Chuck, another great masterclass. I am so happy. I'm so glad. This is like my passion. Just uh, sharing the fuel, sharing the fire. This is that thing about it's easier to get to the ocean as part of a river, right? Like having people around you are like, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Like there's going to be times in your journey where it's harder to get that energy, where we do feel a little deflated, where we do feel like a little bit of doubt creeping in. We're humans. And this is why being in the energy of people who have this unwavering faith in you is such a huge thing. So I'm, I'm so happy you're here today and you're getting some of it. Mandy said, Diane, my daughter, Lily, and I just walked in. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that is lovely. Thank you, Mandy, for sharing that. And hello, Lily. Oh, Laura, thank you. Nelly, thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Such lovely comments. Abby, you're one of the biggest, best investments I've ever gifted to myself. Abby, I love you. A mandatory. No exceptions. I knew I had to join this community to bring it all together. Oh, I love having you in our community. 
We say you're welcome. So, so it is. Yay, Ace. Everyone's like, congrats, Ace. Ace is amazing. I'm so happy that Ace won. Ace is in the network. We love Ace. He's ah, just great. So I'm so happy that he won it. Ace, I'm so happy you've been here. You have the gift of encouragement. Yes. Well, Shona, you know, for me, the reason that it's so important for me to do this and the reason that I feel called to doing this, and you might be like, why does Diane teach screenwriting now? Why isn't she still just writing screenplays? I believe in life that I, our purpose evolves. Like at different times, we feel called to doing different things. I've always been somebody who, if I do something really difficult or that feels impossible to me, immediately I do want to share it. I want to teach other people to do it. It's who I am. The first way that I experienced this was <clears throat> with yoga, because some of you all know I've been a yoga teacher. And for me, discovering yoga and practicing it completely changed my life. It completely just shifted who I am. And I was immediately, I mean, within a year of practicing, I started to teach because I was just like, I was like, I was a born again yogi. <laughs> I was that person. Like everybody's going to do yoga. And I love to teach it. because I was just like, oh my God. And I just wanted everybody to feel the benefits that I felt. I believe my purpose on this planet is to break people through free from their limitations. And I know that I have worked through so many of my own. And the reason that I can encourage people in this path is because this path was not easy for me. I know what it's like. I know what it was like every step of the way, every part of the struggle. And yet I came through it. I've walked through this fire. Like this is something that I have lived. And I've lived it in a very intense way because it was not on the cards that I would write a screenplay, finish it, that I would sell a screenplay, that I would get a movie made and get in Sundance. I mean. This is, none of this is real, like, no, it's crazy. It did not come from a background in which that was a possibility. Where it was something like a normal. I mean, it's just, it's like, it's still, when I think about it in a certain way from my, from my 20 year old self or my 25 year old self, it's like, what? No freaking way. So this is why for me, like I live for this, like I know what it is to, to go through this journey. I know what it's like and I will cheer anybody on who feels called to be on this journey like that is my purpose that is my passion that's what i live for so it's it's it just i this is what i live for i've said sometimes like once upon a time it was my dream to win an oscar and really now it's my dream that somebody else gets up they win an oscar and they thank me like that is just something that i go oh my god that would be the best like i'm sitting in my home here in sitges in spain <laughs> and I'm watching the Oscars. I'm up at four o'clock in the morning and it's like, oh my gosh. You know, somebody just said thank you to me. They won the best director, the best screenplay. And that's what I live for. But I also just live for, you know, being here, sharing, sharing what comes through me. It's my purpose right now. So I'm so happy. Mandy, bedtime. Go to bed. Good night. So I'm now going to talk about a couple of the offers that I have right now. If you are complete, if you're like, Diane, I got what I came for and I'm done for tonight, you're welcome to sign off right now or done for today if you're in America, it's just the middle of the day. But if you're here in Europe and you're like, I'm done, you wanna to go to bed, that's fine. The offers that I have, I have two things and I've really, I'm really seeking to streamline how I help screenwriters. So I'm really simplifying what I have to offer in this area in screen for screenwriters and filmmakers. And I have two things right now. And really, these are going to be pretty much the only two things moving forward. There may be something else. Oh, Victoria, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, Kate, go to your Tai Chi. I love it. So the two things I want to talk about are write your screenplay in eight weeks and the network. And moving forward, these are going to be the two big ways that you can get my support and my guidance on the journey of screenwriting. So write your screenplay in eight weeks is a course. It's a program. It is what it sounds like. It teaches you how to write a screenplay or guides you through writing a screenplay in eight weeks through eight lessons. It is very much a how to program. The course is pre-recorded modules. So the lessons are pre-recorded. When you sign up, what will happen is you will get the first one by email, right? And you will also get invited to a Facebook group and all the lessons live in the Facebook group. So you can go into the Facebook group and watch them all. You can like 
zip through them if you wanted. But otherwise, you can also just work them through one, one week at a time. And as I say, every week you get an email with a new lesson. You can do the lesson. You do the lesson in your own time. The system that I share in this program, Write Your Screenplay in Eight Weeks, is one that I don't know. I mean, it's my system. It's my unique way of writing a screenplay. And it works. If you want to write a screenplay and you want to have fun doing it and you want to do it in a timely way and you want to write the best thing you're capable of with your first draft, it will do it. This will guide you through it. Okay? It's basically every week you get a lesson and it will tell you exactly what you need to do that week. And if you follow the instructions, you will write a screenplay in eight weeks and you will be happy with it. Now, you don't necessarily need to know what your screenplay is completely before you start. So the first two weeks are really sort of excavating it, doing foundation work. You don't actually even write your screenplay in the first two weeks. You're actually just doing foundational work. And everything is guided. Everything is like, here's what you do now. Here's what you need to know. My skill as a teacher, I believe in this, both as teaching filmmaking and in screenwriting, is simplifying things. I am not here to teach like all the theory. This is like how to just really plug into your intuition and be given the essential things you need to know in order to get from the beginning to the end. That's what this program is. So if you want to do that, if this sounds exciting to you, you're like, Diane, I want to write a screenplay and I want to, you know, I'd love to have some guidance on this. This is for you. It's write your screenplay. You can go to dianebell.com slash screenplay and you'll read more about it. And there's a sign up on that page. Okay. Now, if you sign up in the next 48 hours, there is this like beautiful window of time. You will also get a bonus where you're going to get two extra programs screenwriting from the heart and secrets of successful screenwriting and these are two master classes they each have three parts to them where you will learn like how to take your screenwriting to a whole other level okay so that's for the next 48 hours that bonus is added on there so massively practical thank you so many people have success with this program i mean this this program it works it's like there's hundreds of people have gone through it now and it works <laughs> and there's absolutely no reason to struggle with writing your screenplay even if you've started it, some people are like halfway through when they join the program and they're just stuck. And they're like, ah, oh, it's not working. You can join it. Some people have written multiple screenplays and they're like, I just want, I want to try a different way. I want to try a different method. They do it. It works. Some people have never written a screenplay, have no idea about it. They do this method. It works. It just works. It's, I feel like it's one of my greatest gifts to people who want to write screenplays. It's like this, just go to this program. And the thing about my program too is it's not about formula. This is not about like, there's this cookie cutter way to write a screenplay and you have to fit your screenplay into the cookie cutter way. So many people who have done this have said, I've really struggled because I've tried to follow these guidelines. I've tried to follow these rules and I know I'm meant to have this happen on this page and that should happen on that. And they're like, and it just, I could never write a screenplay. Then they say, I, I, come to, I came to this and it just like cracked me open because I am all about like, really having the confidence to let the story come through you. I just believe that the story, you know the story, like it's, it's in you. You just need certain craft tools to unlock it so you can get it on the page. And that's what the program's about. It's giving you those craft tools. It's giving you the confidence. It's giving you the clarity to get it on the page. So if you want to check this out, it's dianebell.com slash screenplay. And for the next 48 hours, you will also get these two bonus classes that normally sell for $222 each. So this is an amazing deal. Now, the other thing that I have on offer right now is the network. Oh, the network. If you're part of the network, some people already mentioned it. So what I have to tell you about the network, though, is some exciting news about it. <laughs> people who are already in it are going to be so happy when they hear this news. The network. <clears throat> so the network is my monthly subscription for screenwriters. This is for you if you've already written a screenplay. It doesn't teach you how to write a screenplay. Okay. Now, you could join the network while you write your screenplay because the network is how you can get access to me. It's how you can get direct access to asking me questions and getting my guidance and my support because it started as a way for that really. So every month in the network, you get access to four Zooms with me. There's one every single week and one is on 
screenwriting, like writing your screenplay, the craft of screenwriting. So you come to that Zoom and you can ask, like, how do I how do I format this kind of dialogue? How do I deal with having this kind of character? What do I do about this? You know, it's like the craft of screenwriting. We do one Zoom call that's about what happens after you've written your screenplay. So this is for you if you were like, you know, you want guidance about getting an agent or a manager, or you want guidance about reaching out to a company or an actor, or you want guidance about how to take the next steps to find a producer for your film or whatever it is. So that's where we talk about what comes after the screenplay has been written. Then we have one Zoom that's about filmmaking. And this is for the filmmakers in our group. So you can ask me about filmmaking. Now, here's the deal. I've directed three movies. I've been so involved in two of those in the actual production. There's a lot of things that I have to offer on this. My book, Shoot From The Heart, is obviously a way of, of approaching filmmaking. So if you want my guidance, so if you're like making a film, you can come to these and ask questions. And then every month I also do one general Zoom call where you can ask anything you want. And to be honest, often they're very intimate groups. So to be clear, right now, in the network, you will always get a chance to ask a question. If you come to those Zooms and you want, you've got like questions you want to ask, you will always get a chance to ask the questions. So it's at, like say, access to me and feedback and support. If you join Write Your Screenplay in eight weeks, you will have the option as you check out to join, um, to join the network. So, and you will get to join the network at quite a big discount. And that's really my way of just supporting you. If you're writing a screenplay for the first time, you're like, I want to write the screenplay and I want to do the, the self-paced course, but I really would love to be able to tap into the community and talk to Diane. Join both. Do both. And then you'll have both. So the network. Four calls with me every month. That's the first part. The second part. There's four peer-to-peer -peer Zoom calls every month. Now, this is something that I felt was really important for the network, that it's not always me having conversations with people because often the conversations, you know, the Zooms that I'm at are sort of like, it's hot seat coaching, right? Like you get to ask a question and I will answer and then somebody else asks a question and I'll answer. But what I wanted to do in the network too was create a space in which people can connect with each other. That's the network. That's the community. And so I don't, I'm not at those calls. They're run by my assistant, Rochelle. She's incredible. She's a screenwriter, filmmaker herself. She's a beautiful human being. And she hosts them. And really it's this chance for people within the network to meet each other and to talk to each other and get support, give support, all the things. The community is amazing. I know that in this community, like people are helping each other. People read each other's scripts. People cheer each other on. People like go to each other's table reads, help each other organize table reads. All the things go on in there. So that happens. There's four of those calls each month. And again, they're loosely based on those themes as well. But again, I think people just, people show up and chat. It's, it's very democratic, you know, but you'll get community. Now, the other things that happen in the network every month, there is a call every month. We call it the salon call with an industry insider. And we talk I have a conversation with them it's a zoom and afterwards the floor is open and you get to ask them questions and connect so so far this year we've had like and this is my intention is like all different aspects of the industry this is an opportunity not just to meet people who are like will expand your understanding of the whole process of making films but also to to learn you know to to inform yourself and it's that thing to to improve your craft in so many ways because as a screenwriter the more that you know about different aspects of filmmaking the better it's going to be so this year so far we have had a conversation with Dan Halstead who is a talent manager he's the manager of Taika Waititi and Catherine Hardwick amongst many other people so we had a conversation with him we've had a conversation with Richard Hicks a casting director he was the casting director for Hell or High Water Zero Dark Thirty etc a whole bunch of incredible movies he talked all about casting movies and how to get a casting director um, yes, everything is recorded and can be viewed later. Everything is recorded. It's, it's all. And if you join now, to be clear, you also get access to the vault. So you're not just getting, you know, like what will happen this month. You can go in there and you'll find under guides all these conversations with these people. We had a conversation with um, John Michael Powell, the editor of my movies, who has also written and directed his own movie now. We've had Mariana Palka, a screenwriter, director, incredible powerhouse of a woman. She's directed, I think, 10 feature films talking about her whole journey in that and how to do it. 
We had a call with Karen Smythe, a producer. I, this was an incredibly popular one. People really were just like, I learned so much about producing movies and about what that looks like. And, you know, as a writer, how you work with a producer, how you find a producer, what they're looking for. And a lot of connections were made, a lot of people, because she was incredibly generous with, you know, saying people get in touch with me and beautiful. This month, so actually, and if you're in the network, you might have been part of our call the other day where I said, we're going to have, but it has just been postponed. So it's going to be in the first week of October. So if you join now, you'll be part of this. Our next guest is going to be Valerie Weiss, who is a TV director, incredibly successful TV director. The reason we had to postpone it, she has to deliver her director's cut of the episode she's just done of Outer Banks. It's a Netflix show. It's a big hit show on Netflix. So she's a regular director on that. She's directed shows like Scandal, uh, so many different TV shows. So she's also directed a number of movies. Uh, she's incredible. And I just really thought it'd be interesting to talk to somebody who is a director in television and talk about that and what that journey has been. So every month there's a conversation like this, really incredible people. I know that people who are in the network find these conversations so enlightening, so helpful, so inspiring, all the things. They're fantastic. And yes, they are recorded. So if you can make it to the live, they're always put into the vault afterwards, into the guides, and you can check them afterwards. And as I say, even if you join now, which is kind of incredible, you would get the ones that already exist. In addition to this, <laughs> so as I say, the network, it keeps going. It keeps getting better. In addition to that, you also get, there's access, we do a script club every month. So I was talking in the session about that thing, like you need to like read scripts. What's really even better is to read them and talk to other people about them to see scripts through other people's eyes. So we have this script club. It's like a book club, except it's scripts. Every month there's a script. It's like, read the script. This month it was book smart. Um, every month is a different script, different genre, different thing. And you read it and then there's a meeting and you can get together and discuss the script with other screenwriters. It's golden. It's amazing. In addition to this, we have quarterly pitch sessions. So once every few months, we were doing it every month, but it seemed like too much. So we're doing it probably every quarter now where you will have a pitch session where you can sign up and, and practice your pitch of your project and get feedback on it. So important. And basically this group is like, it's always evolving. It's always growing. There's always, you know, ideas are always welcome. If there's, if you join the network and you're like, Hey, it would be really helpful if we had this or wouldn't, couldn't we do this? I'm always open to it and we're always evolving. Now, the other things that are coming, Claudine, who is a member of the network, said this is wonderful to have the opportunity to hear them. Yes, I'm so, I'm so happy. It really is. I think the, the salon conversations are really, they've been great. And I think it just, like, it just opens your mind to different aspects of the industry. And that's my intention with them. It's just always to invite very different people, very diverse perspectives, very different jobs. So you get just different insights into how this works and how to have success at what you're doing. So... This has been the network so far. The thing that is coming to the network, right, and we're working on this right now, is that very soon it's also going to include a lot of actual learning content. And up until now, it hasn't included that. Up until now, it's really just been about the meetings and, you know, the live experiences and so forth. But very soon, as I said, I'm just, I'm desiring to simplify my offerings around screenwriting and filmmaking. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if the network was actually where you would get access to my class, the directing master class? Wouldn't it be cool if it's how you got sell your script, revise your script, right? Like if all these things were in there. So while you're a member of the network, you can use these, you can like look at these, you know, go into this content, work through programs and come to meetings and talk about it. So there's going to be a lot of things being added to the network. And right now we are in the midst of building a whole sort of site so that when you join the network, you will get access to the site that's not on Facebook. And <laughs> so it's a whole separate thing. So this isn't ready yet. I'm just going to let you know. Oh, thank you, Nina. So it's not ready yet. I'm going to let you know it's not there. But if you join today, first of all, you're going to lock in a lower price. So for the next 48 hours, it's normally $111 a month. But if you join in the next 48 hours, it's going to be 20% off. Use the code KEYS, right? KEYS. And you will get 20% uh, off. So it's $88 a month. 
Now, you will lock that in for as long as you stay member. Something that we are changing with the network is that if you leave, you cannot rejoin for one year. Okay, so you join the network and once you're in, you've got the price that you have joined at, right? And this is going to be one of the new things because it's going to be a lot of, you're going to get access to a lot of things. And it's like way over that value, like way, 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 you know, you're, you're going to be soon getting access to thousands of dollars worth of programs for that price. So just to like tighten it up, it's going to be, once you join, you get that price for as long as you remember. But if you leave, then you cannot rejoin immediately. And also when you do rejoin, the price will have gone up because it is going to go up slightly. So right now you can join it for $88 a month, or you can join it for, it would normally be a thousand dollars, but 20% off that. So like, I think less than $800 a month for a year. So you can join an annual membership or a monthly membership. It's up to you. And like I said, use code keys and you will get this off. Now, also just to make it exciting for you, if you choose to join today, you'll also get access to a program that I did called Operation Greenlight. Operation Greenlight is kind of like a legend in my circle. <laughs> if you were there, you'll know. If you've done it, you will know. It's a five day program on how to get to green light. If we're talking about screenwriting success, this is it. This is like the five day program to shift you from having written a screenplay to getting the green light. It's an incredible program. So it normally sells for $500, but right now, if you join the network today, you're gonna get access to that at no extra cost, all right? That again will be 48 hours. So like basically through the weekend, these offers. Green light is huge. I know. I just, I, for me, it's like one of my favorite programs that I've ever taught. There's something about it. There's an energy to it. It's also just like a way of understanding this process, which no one else covers. It's a completely different approach. It's great. So right now, if you join the network, you will get access to that. You'll get immediate access to that. It's five parts. It's like, I don't know, probably about 10 hours of content though. It's a lot. It's amazing. And that will just like get, get, get you excited for what is coming. And as I say, we are right now building this site. It's going to come, you know, hopefully I don't want to curse it. <laughs> like, hmm, it's going to be coming within the next month, though. So I'm so excited for everybody. It's a big switch for us. This is a huge build. I don't know if anyone knows tech stuff about these kinds of things, but what we're doing behind the scenes is massive right now, but it's going to be amazing. We will still have the Facebook group. That will still be a big part of the network, but you are also going to get this like passcode into this whole new place. That's going to be amazing. It's so exciting. So if you join now, you will get that. You will get into that and you will lock in this lower price. And as I say, ultimately, when we totally open that and get everything going, the price for the network is going to rise. So this is a great time to get in, to get established in the group and to get in an amazing price that you lock in for life because with the 20% off is $88 a month for as long as you stay a member. And honestly, what you're getting for that, it's so much more. Now you can, because it's a monthly membership, you can join and then you can leave. If you join for a month or two and you decide this isn't for me, you can leave. It's no problem. If you join for a month, you do the, the program, you know, you do Operation Greenlight uh, and you will get to keep o Operation Greenlight. So you join just now, you'll get to keep that no matter what. That's, you know, that's a $500 course and you get that for $88 today. So it, it, it's, a, it's a great offer. But that's it. That's going to be my two things now, really, for screenwriters and filmmakers. It's going to be write your screenplay and it's going to be the network. And the network will give you the access to all the other programs that I have and that I do on filmmaking. So you're going to get make your movie boot camp through it. You're going to get directing masterclass. You're going to get sell your script. You're going to get all these things through being in the network. Um, thank you, Sol. So thank you so much for being with me. If you're interested in the network, I'll give you the link. <laughs> because you're probably like, but where do I join? I'm going to just like right now, put the link into our chat. And then, and then we will be uh, complete for today. If you have any questions too, or anything, anything you'd like to share, any questions, pop it in the chat right now. And we will address it. All right, let me see. If I can find this on here, that's it. I found it. Okay, so I just put the link in to join the network. And remember, use the code KEYS and you will get the 20% off. And it's going to be amazing. 
And you will also get, as I said, you can also do it for a year. You can sign up for a year, lock it in, and it's incredible. Good night, Les. Thank you. And one last thing, don't forget, if you want the name in my hat so that you win one year in the network and you get a one-to-one -one session with me. Da -da -da -da. And by the way, if you're in the network, if you had paid for a year and then you won the prize, just to let you know, we would refund your money. So um, share about this masterclass, share it widely and get your name in the hat. So $88 a month, correct. Or one-time payment of 800. Yeah, I think it's around 800. It would be, be less than 800 actually if it's 20% off. So it's nine, I'm not great with math. <laughs> That's why I'm a screenwriter, right? So um, it's like 999, 20% off 999. Whatever that might be, whatever that might be, is what you will pay. So it's a really good, it's a really good deal. It's a very, very, very good deal. All right, my loves, done. Yay. Oh, are you joining the network, Victoria? I hope so. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for coming. I hope that this class has just like put some fuel in your tank, excited you, inspired you, made you feel that excitement. That's what will get you to success. And if you want to stay in that energy, you want to be around my energy, you want to be in this group with these people because there's always great energy, join the network, sign up for Write Your Screenplay. And again, if you want to do both, go to Write Your Screenplay in eight weeks, sign up for that. And as you're checking out, you'll get the option to join the network. And I should say you get an even better deal on it. So go and have a look and see what that is if you're wanting to do both. If you just want to do the network, the best deal is the 20% off, okay? But if you're going to um, join Write Your Screenplay and you're thinking, I wanna have support from Diane and Beer in that vibe too, then join both. And you'll see as you check out, there's an incredible way to join both. Claudine, bon soirée à tous, à tout en bien. <laughs> Merci. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Go write your screenplays. Go be excited. Be you. Let your voice be heard. It's your time. Let's make magic. All right. Love you and see you soon. And if you have any questions about the network or about write your screenplay, pop them into our group or send me a DM and I'd be delighted to answer you. I love you and I hope to see you soon. Bye.